Welcome back to the show, guys and girls. Uh, we're here again with the uh, Kawasaki FE290D, and we're going to do some uh, testing today. Uh, in this video, I hope to test the uh, Stator side here. Is it Stator or Stator? Stator, like Skeletor? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we're going to test the uh, the Stator, which, uh, which uh, provides a, a charging current. Um, we're also going to um, take a look at the uh, coil. Um, I noticed uh, whenever I was taking the uh, the spark plug out that I've got some issues with this. So this actually is a separate piece. Um, this cap plug assembly is a separate piece from this. Um, I went ahead and bought both of those uh, parts. Here's your part number. There's the ignition coil is a uh, 21121-2067, and then the actual uh, cap plug assembly is a uh, uh, 21160.2057. So uh, we're going to take a look at those and then we're going to uh, to tackle this carburetor. So uh, let's get going with that. I already have the Stator connected uh, to the leads that are coming out here. Uh, the factory service manual for this uh, suggests a minimum of 0.2. Let's see here. A minimum of 0.2 and a maximum of 0.4 ohms. And if we and over here we've got 0.5 ohms, so it's a little bit high. Um, I think you know I'm, I'm happy to see that it's not just a uh, open short. So let's uh, let's call that one good, and we'll move on to the next thing. We're going to uh, to take a look look at this ignition coil. One of the first things I noticed with this engine was there's a scraping that's happening right here right here I mean it's really close you know sometimes I can hear it scraping sometimes not so much but uh, this this gap right here the factory service manual says that we should be getting about or it should be uh, 0 0.30 millimeters and that's a little bit tight so uh, let's go ahead and just take this off these are uh, eight millimeter bolts Connection here. Unless you've already done that. There we go. Just okay. Okay. For the ignition coil inspection, there are several procedures that here that we do not have the coil tester tool, so we cannot perform that section right here. We can, however. Uh, measure the coil resistance and so for that we're going to test the primary windings first uh, That's going to be this. I'm sorry this side over here. We have the uh, This is kind of set up as a mirror opposite because you know, I wanted to do a B uh, So our primary coil here uh, we have our meter set to Okay, so for the primary windings uh, let's set our ohm meter to the lowest setting there and just like that. All right, 1.4, 1.5. Okay, uh, a little bit high. And then the secondary windings, let's roll over to the 20,000 setting. And having a hard time here getting any kind of a reading. There's no tab on this side like there was for this one. Nothing. So I don't know if there's something that I'm missing here uh, or what, but you know, nonetheless, we have the uh, we've got the replacement part, so we're going to just uh, replace this anyway. Um, I did want to show you something though. Let's take a look inside here. Um, you know, these are the two parts that that uh, you know kind of go together here to make part of this. Um, this thing is just a little bit uh, cruddy in there and then this this wire here um, leaves a little bit to be uh, desired it's all corroded so I, I feel good about changing out both parts and we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that now all right here's our new assembly next to our old one there's our new uh, cap plug there 
let's take this thing and we're gonna need it for the next application. So let's just kind of pull that off there and replace it back the same way on this one. There's that. And then for this, I doubt you can see in here, but there is a nope. There is a tell you what, let me do this. I was trying to show you the wrong side of this anyway. That's the side that the spark plug uh, mates to. So the side I wanted to show you was this right here. There is a, it's like a pointed, like a just a point. Uh, it's probably half inch long or so in there that is, uh, I guess, complementary to this. Whenever you mount this thing, you know, the first time you'll just stick that in there and it's going to make a nice bond. That point's going to, to, to stick in the middle of this wire and uh, mechanically uh, bond the two together. And we'll take a measurement of the new one just to see uh, how close it is to spec. So that's 1.2. The um, factory service manual is a little bit outside the, uh, the range of that. So we're looking for something closer to 0 0.7 to 1.1. But you know, the, the, the variances in this could just be my meter. Uh, you know, this is kind of a cheap model that I got off of eBay. Uh, for just a few dollars so uh, maybe that's our deal all right so that's the uh, primary let's take a look at the that's the primary let's take a look at the secondary uh, change our setting to 20,000 ohms and then we're gonna go from that same spot there to try to get up in there where the spark plug would go Okay, and you can see that we're looking at 13, 13.02, which again, the secondary winding, the factory service manual specifies between six and 10, so it's, it's high as well. I'm not, I'm not too worried about this. Uh, it's, it's brand new out of the box, so uh, surely it's got to, uh, got to work. Okay, so we're ready to mount this thing back up here. We're going to leave this kind of loose so that we've got a, uh, a place to, uh, we need to adjust our gap. So let's do that now. There we go, so we're able to slide that thing all the way around in there to where it's under both of those. And let's just kind of tighten those up just a little bit there. One more test. That feels good. All right, that does not. Let's see if we can back that off just a little bit.
Alright, that feels good. Nice. And now... Uh, I think I need to get another uh, spark plug that has the correct assembly there. Oh, we can uh, tell you what, let's do this. Let's uh, put some contact cleaner in there before we reattach that. And we'll get ourselves just a little deoxid and pop it right in there before we uh, install that plug. Kind of work that around a little bit to remove some of the oxidation from those contacts that have probably accumulated over a few years. I'm not sure what happened to the head of this one, but it needs to go. And uh, we are, we've already sparked uh, Gap this to 0.75 uh, millimeters, which that's what it was right out of, the, out of the package. It's a BPR5 ES. And now that's going to fit really nicely, I think. Oh yeah, so nice. Cool. Okay, as a bonus test that I did not mention in the description or the intro, uh, we're going to take a look at the igniter. Uh, it's this little doodad right here. The factory service manual has a, um, has a test for it as well that we can use our multimeter for. So let's kind of pull this down here. Can you see that? So for this, um, it gives you two different readings to look for here with the, set this up. Okay, so we put the positive, if we put the positive on the terminal and the negative on the case, we should get a reading. We're in the, the 2000 uh, uh, ohms range. We should get a reading of somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000. Our reading of uh, 1,918 is uh, within that range, so that's good. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll swap these two, and we'll put the negative on the terminal and the positive on the case. And for that one, we are supposed to get between 2,000 and 6,000, and we're getting 551. So we'll make a note of that, and if we have issues later on, we may come back to this igniter. And for you budget misers out there who are keeping up with how much I'm spending on this, after this uh, carburetor uh, repair kit uh, today, we're going to be at 412.50 for the project, and uh, that includes 87.90 on uh, well, 200 for the bike itself, 87.90 on cylinder head parts. $38 in labor, which is not too bad, a $9.32 oil filter from last video, and then the um, carburetor rebuild kit, ignition coil, and the, um, the gaskets to put the carburetor back on. And so, uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's, we're, we're getting on up there, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty reasonable. And sometimes it's good just to come back here, take a break, and dream about the, uh, dream about the project won't be too long until we're putting a motor back in there and these are going to be good times. It's going to be a good ride. Yeah, some good stuff there. Okay, so let's take a look at this carburetor. It's pretty cruddy looking. Um, now the spring action on the choke seems to work. Uh, throttle, you can look down in there. It's uh, I mean, I guess it's not too bad, but we'll, we'll get this thing cleaned up. I don't know that I'm going to uh, uh, film the whole thing. I'm sure this is not the first time you've seen a carburetor clean, but uh, if it is, I tell you what, we'll, uh, the first thing we're going to do is, is uh, count the number of turns out that this uh, adjustment screw is, um, and then we'll just kind of make note of that, and then that's what we'll set it to whenever we reassemble this. Um, 
Guys, do you have a, a tool that you can't ever seem to locate? This is mine. A lot of a lot of guys have 10 millimeter sockets that they can't find. This little flathead wrench is is mine. So anyway, uh, it took me about 15 minutes to find this thing. So let's count the numbers of turns here. It's a half a turn. One, one and a half, two, two and a half, just about three, three turns. All right. I have some of my wife's fine china here that I'm going to clean this thing in. I'm wearing gloves too because the, uh, the carburetor cleaner seems to react poorly with my wedding band and I'm not sure really why so let's take a look at this here. That little valve Yeah, that, that looks okay. Okay. All right, so uh, next thing that we're gonna do here is, I think I'm going to uh, take this bowl off here, which looks like maybe a 10 or an eight. All right, and it was a 10. Okay, so yeah, not too bad. The float seems to be in good shape there. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is take out this little joker here, and there's gonna be a um, oh, what's that thing called? That thing is connected to a, a needle valve in there. So we'll uh, we will disassemble all that, and then I'll get back to you. have a tiny punch sometimes, you can kind of kick that pin down. Alright, there we go. There's that. Now, you can carefully... Let's see if I can show you this. Pull that out here is your needle valve and let's take a look at it here and I would say it's hard to get a good contrast on that I'll put it down here okay and that's just about what you want to see there uh, we can even look in the book, and that would be the uh, the textbook sign of a good needle valve. So, uh, not too not too bad there. All right, let's take out our main jet uh, right in here, just as well. Okay. And it does not appear to be clogged there. Okay, let's take this thing out in the yard and spray it down a little bit. And most carburetor cleaners can be caustic uh, to rubbers and plastics, so there's a way we can get this thing out of there. I can't tell, is it already out of there? What is that? No, it's in there. It's just old and funky. Well, I don't want to mar that up too much. Let's, uh, let's start spraying this thing down.
We'll see what all parts I got in my little kit here. Okay. So, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times these are kind of generic and you don't need every part uh, that they give you. Um, so, it's like they gave us a new needle valve there. Don't think that's ours. This is not ours. Not sure about that or that. I think we can use this. I think this, I think we can use that as well. And main jet. And I'm not sure. This is our old uh, fuel air adjustment. Is that the same? That might actually be the same as this. of a table with cracks in it. Okay, um, I don't even know what these are. These ones? Okay, so maybe a spring. They give us an extra spring. I think this is just a drain hole, like if you're wanting to put the uh, put the wheeler up for the season and get the fuel out of the float, I think you can just unscrew that and that will drain it. Uh, so maybe we've got a new spring for that. Maybe we've got a new spring for the uh, fuel air mixture and uh, oh yeah so they gave us a new um, kind of that that pivoting rod that goes in the uh, in the float there it kind of goes in that hole right there so okay cool right, now we're ready to start putting this thing back together uh, let's start with the uh, let's start with the main jet and here is a uh, brand new one here Put in there and start screwing that one down. Find your favorite flathead screwdriver and tighten that up as tight as it will go. So now, uh, one of the things, okay, so this was the old screw that was in the float bowl, like kind of the drain screw there. This looks like a new assembly. Let's go ahead and we can also screw that one in all the way. We need a Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm going to keep all of my old parts just, uh, just for good measure. May not even be what that's for, but we'll see. Okay, so there's that one. And even though this new uh, uh, fuel air mixture screw looks a little different, I think I'm going to use it because I felt like the the tip of that one, the tip of this one, kind of it had a little bit of a hook to it. So let's go ahead and we'll screw it all the way in. And then we'll back it out the three turns that we calculated earlier. It's kind of handy if you can actually do this one uh, with your hand because of that flat edge on there. Okay, that's all the way in, so we're gonna go that's one. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. And three. Okay. Next. Get our 
new little float that it's in here. This thing should have a little hang on it. Okay, so it looks like we need to reuse this little bitty piece right there, and we'll just pull that delicately back and snap it on that one. There's the new one. So now, we want to see how we can get this thing set up here. It goes, it goes the other way like this because that flap there needs to be able to hit against that right there. Okay, so what we'll do is we will hang it So that's what your finished product should look like there. And when this, of course it's upside down, but whenever that thing goes back and forth, when that thing goes back and forth like that, that's the action you're looking for. So, all right. All right, so the last thing we need to do here is put our gasket down in there and I'm pretty sure that there was not a gasket in there before it looked like there was but it was just um, funky metal I believe so that's all the way around she would seat a little better okay so I actually had to manually kind of stretch this thing out like a rubber band a little bit to get it to fit around there and that's okay so put this on now Okay, we've got a good seal all the way around. Okay, we put our bolt in there and tighten her up. Oh, tell you what, you know what? It looks like we got a new. That's what that is. That we got a new washer there. So let's let's use it. Why not? Okay, so there we go. Uh, this thing is ready to reinstall. Uh, looks like they gave us a, uh, a gasket. I'm not sure if that's going to be the exact size that we need, uh, but we, uh, if we can use it, we will use it. Um, but we will, uh, I think we're going to install this on the next video. I'm running out of battery right now, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, uh, please like, consider subscribing, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.